As campaigns officially kicked off yesterday, the People's Democratic Party has formally inaugurated its 2023 Presidential Campaign Council, headed as chairman by Akwa Ibom State Governor Udom Emmanuel. The party's national chairman, Iyoche Ayu, was represented by his deputy, Ambassador Ilya Damagun, urged all members to work diligently to ensure victory for the party. Leaders of the council are promising to work assiduously for the Atiku Abubakar campaign and urge electoral body, the INEC, to conduct free and fair elections in 2023. Also, the governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Tambua, said that the People's Democratic Party will work collectively as a family to win the 2023 polls. In addition, Akwa Ibom State Governor and head of the campaign council, Emmanuel Udom, warned members of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council not to carry out campaigns for the 2023 general elections from Abuja. You know, I really want to appreciate our party. Also thank the candidates, our presidential candidate for this confidence and our party for the privilege for all of us to serve in this council. This campaign council we have the seriousness that is required. If you look at the caliber of people, you know that we have that seriousness that is required. We'll do everything possible. And I want to assure you that as a campaign council, we also have the unity that is required. It is our duty to campaign, to carry the message, to publicize the message on how to rescue and restore the hope of Nigerians. It is for Nigerians to vote and for the Almighty to give victory. We shall work collectively as a family and expeditiously to ensure the victory of our party. The party of the PDP and indeed its candidate is the party to beat in this election. It is only for us to work and go on our side we shall deliver this victory to our party and to Nigerians. We know the support that we enjoy in this country, and we appeal that INEC shall conduct free and fair elections. Joining us now is Dr. Don Pedro Obaseke, consultant, media and communication strategy to Atiku Abubakar, presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Good morning, Pedro. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, good morning, my senior. Good morning, <laughs> Dr. Abate. Good morning. Well, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go to Anton Chekhov. <laughs> this morning, this morning, we're talking about <laughs> no, I won't, I won't, I won't. Good morning. <laughs> anyway, very quickly. What do you make uh, of the... Uh, don't, don't blame me. You, you, you... <laughs> anyway. Uh, this morning, uh, let's talk about the PDP. What do you make of the inauguration of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council uh, yesterday? And what will you say about the fact that Governor Yesom Wiki and his allies were conspicuously absent? Uh, many have said this is an indication uh, that, you know, the rift within the party remains a problem. Um, I think yesterday, um, the cross-section that um, we saw as showcased in Abuja, the inauguration, shows that all the little fragments <coughs> that seem to be wobbling are all coming together. And um, it was nice to see that uh, the campaign council is being led by uh, uh, His Excellency Udom Emmanuel as well as the management committee being led by uh, His Excellency Aminu Tambua. Uh, on the second side, um, first, the camaraderie that was displayed yesterday showed a party that is bent on following his timetable and also bent on bringing everybody together. The inclusivity that is being um, uh, uh, banded all over the place was reiterated yesterday both in, in all the speeches by all the lead speakers, the representative of the national chairman, the, 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 the vice presidential candidate, uh, Ifan Yokoa, Tambua, the DG, uh, Udon Emmanuel, the, the chairman of the council, and 
very insightfully the, 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 the person of His Excellency uh, Atikwa Uboka. Coming to the one of the conspicuous absence, as uh, unquote, I also think that um, maybe it would have not, it would have been a voter face, very seriously, if we had seen any of them there. But I don't think that is the end of it. Um, you know, the, we have to also look at the timing. Uh, his last interview was just uh, two, three working days away uh, ago on Friday last week. And I'm very convinced, I am convinced, that taking the last line of Mr. Yeson Wike in that national broadcast, the options are not closed. And he has made it clear that he's willing to negotiate. You know, life is about negotiation. There is no uh, hard and fast rules about policy. I mean, it's all about negotiation. And I think that the principal, my principal, the presidential candidate of the party, is very, very disposed to making sure that a timber in the forest like we saw Wiki is not left uh, uh, outside of the fray. That is a truism. In spite of their seeming absence yesterday, I think okay. there is a lot going on to make sure everybody comes on board. All right, a timber in the forest is not left out of the fray, like you said. But a lot of people will say this timber probably has been cut down from your fold in the sense that he's not backing down. All the talks have failed. As we speak today, there are also talks about people trying to scuttle your campaign within your party. A lot of people say the PDP is in disarray. disarray. I mean, Dr. Abati here, uh, not quoting Chekhov, always quotes uh, what happened in the PDP in 2015. <laughs> All right? How, when yes. the rain started to beat the PDP, they thought they could muscle it through. They were the party in power then. But because of this discord on tunes, they couldn't do anything in 2015, and they lost that election. So a lot of people are saying the PDP is well on their way to losing this one with all of this happening and with this fight going on. I, I beg to differ a bit very seriously. Um, number one, you see the factors that led to the, the I, I see it as the serial betrayer of the candidacy of Goodluck Jonathan in 2015, the factors are diametrically different. They are actually opposed. And if you also look at it, as at that time, we had seven governors who went rogue all at one and same time, as well as a plethora of National Assembly members, senators, and, and House of Rep. And of course, there were some belief that there were infighting within the party, even among those who didn't leave the party. That is not as, this, this is not as seismic as that one was. Number two, Abtikwa Abubakar is not in power. He is not in government yet. So I can understand, I mean, there is going to be, there is an empty seat come 20, uh, May 29th, 2023. And everybody is fighting for maybe a little bit of that pie. That is understandable. I believe that with the time available, which wasn't available in 2015, if I remember clearly, in 2015, the, the primaries was held in December. I still remember the primaries was held between December 6th, 14th and 15th of 2014, barely two months into the election. But now we have time enough time to fight ourselves, that is understandable, even in the mouth, tongue and teeth, they fight, you know? And I think as time goes on, looking at all the metrics, putting all together, it is to the collective advantage of both the candidate and, and uh, a barrister Yeson Wike to make sure that they all come together. However, big as the timber in the forest may be, the timber ain't the forest. When it becomes seemingly impossible or seemingly intractable, intractable to make sure everybody comes together, then the PDP has to go as a corporate entity. You see, Nigeria is our collective commonwealth. That is why I said the factors of 2015 are diametrically opposed to this. Except maybe you are telling me, and I think he can never do that, he will never do that. We know him, he's not as... Um, five governors left the PDP in one fair swoop in 2019. That ain't going to happen this time around. That is the truth. And where are you going to, even if you decide to move? Is it to the sitting 
APC that has taken Nigeria on an unmapped journey to Neverland? The answer is no. I think that every man of reason, including Mr. Yeson Wike, in spite of all the brigandage, in spite of all the anger, the angst, he will be a student of history. And I believe that he will not want to be judged unfairly by history as a result of his seeming propensity of a me, 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 me. That is all he's all about. Me, 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 me. That is all he's been about. And I think when he comes down, I pray he does calm down. Everybody has a different cooling temperature or a different uh, graph to that cooling, cool, cooling down. I think he will see that the pendulum has swung and the train has long left the station on the 29th of May 2020 at the primaries. Every other thing is just sophist. That is the truth. Okay, two quick things. How do you explain the fact that yes. uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP was in Enugu just before the uh, inauguration of the uh, presidential campaign council uh, yesterday? And yet, Governor Nguanyi was conspicuously uh, absent. I know you are not uh, Governor Nguanyi's uh, spokesperson, but some people have said, well, I mean, why, why was he not in Abuja, having just hosted, you know, the uh, candidate and other party members? But the question I really want to ask you is about the polls. The polls, about three major ones now, and our polls, one other one, and then Bloomberg News. Uh, uh, those polls have consistently put Peter Obi of the Labour Party ahead. That if the elections were to be conducted today, Peter Obi would win. But yesterday, at the uh, PDP event in Abuja, Governor Ifan Yokowa, uh, running mate to Atiku, was very clear in saying that if the elections were to be held today, he was convinced that the PDP would win. But that's not what the polls are saying. You are a veteran of uh, political campaigns. What do you think of the polls? Yes, sir. Um, I, even have, I had a copy sent to me uh, yesterday of the one that they came up with that gave um, uh, uh, my principal as second to Peter Obi. I looked at the general methodology. It looked scientifically okay. But I looked at the arithmetics of the polling and I just started laughing. You are doing a poll and you made phone calls to seven people in, in states in the north. You are doing a poll. And you are making seven phone calls to areas of Nigeria that report 40, 50, 55 percent of voter turnout while doing 150 to 200 phone calls in Lagos that has never gone above 18.5 percent in voter turnout. That is Jabawakri. And I looked at it and I just laughed. I said, whoever is paying this, oh, they are doing well. But however, you see, the polling has become a pool for a particular upwardly mobile sector of the quality. It is not the reflection of the total urban and rural voting population. I will say, without missing words, I mean, I've been involved since 1999, sir, in almost every presidential race from primaries to the elections. And I know that this one will be different and I know that this one will not only be different, it will be the first time Nigeria is running a three and a half horse race. And as a result of that, the factors are also going to be different. The calculation of the matrix will be different. And I know Mr. Peter will be gentleman as he is. He knows his capacity. We know our capacity. We know the capacity of His Excellency, the Wazir Adamo Atiko Uboka. So we are not going to be fazzled by all. I can remember in 2015, up until the day the election was shifted from February 14, that, that Valentine Day uh, 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 shifted. We, many of us still thought, based on our skewed polls, that good luck Jonathan was going to win. However, the electorate said a Cabo do rejectamenta to that. And that is what we saw. All of us still felt, including my Oga, who is my big friend and, and one of my mentors. I'm talking about Ruben. So 
on that alone, I look at, I'm not taken in by the emotions of the campaign. I'm not fizzled by the brick bracks and the fight within the, within the, the, all the parties, because the PDP zone has been in the public domain, but the PDP zone is minuscule when you compare it with the, with the problems in the APC, with the national chairman early this morning sending to the other, to the, to the candidate, a total disengagement and disagreement with the entire structure of the, cam of the campaign. That is quite different from a yes on week, a, a governor of a state and a few of his journeymen. So we know within ourselves that the Atiku Okowa ticket is I bet the most balanced ticket of all the major political parties. And that is the truth. The, it straddles the entire value chain. The, each of the candidates have enough knowledge, capacity, and ability. Each of them have the bravery, the, the potential to pull Nigeria together. Atiku is pan-Nigerian more than pan-Nigerian, more than all the all the four of them. And also when we look at it, great man Peter Obi, I don't have anything against him. I think tell, I keep telling people that within the sanctuary of his locked door. Peter Obi is as obediently articulated as Pedro is. Because he has told it on this same public domain that he is a product of Atiku. So I understand to a large extent what is playing out in the public space, particularly among those of us who depend so much on our handheld devices. But we know that on election day, the matrix will be different. We know that on election day, I, mean, I neck a few weeks ago released that even the new voters that were pushed up by, the, maybe principally by the upsurge in the OB movement, more than 53% of the entire persons who had gone to register for, for their PVCs wouldn't even have it. So we are realistic. We are pragmatic. We will not be dragged into any elemental dogma at this point in time. We are focused. Okay. And that focus drive, and, 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 and that is our objective. Okay, so two things. Uh, you talked about people that will be sent in Neverland. So I'll ask you, who will be Peter Pan in this regard? In 2015, your candidate <laughs> probably was Peter Pan. And what caused the crisis in 2015? It's just like what's causing the crisis. So I was surprised when you said they're diametrically opposed. They're not. In 2015, it was because the North felt it was their time and they were at variance with Good Luck Jonathan running on the Northern ticket. What is causing the problem with Wiki? He was supposed to be zoned to the South. The PDP said, okay, let's open it up. No, no, no. And, uh, no, 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 no. Can I finish? Uh, Rufai, Rufai, can I, can Rufai, I finish? Rufai, you're not going to allow me to finish. Okay, you say supposed gonna, to be zoned. You're not you going to allow me to finish. Okay, go ahead. Good. <laughs> Let me finish my point okay. and you respond. <laughs> I repeat, <laughs> supposed to be zoned by the South by your zoning agreement, but all of a sudden it was opened up. That same Governor Gwani that Atiku Abaka went to meet yesterday was part of those that had held the meeting and said the zoning was supposed to come to the South. It was supposed to be justice, but it was opened up. And guess what happened? There's been backlash. Now they're saying it shouldn't be a Northern affair. Ah, you should step down on all of that. Like in 2015, which your presidential candidate when was the Peter Pan, you have brought up the case of speaking about Neverland. Will this your candidate be the Peter Pan living in Neverland in this 2023 elections? That's one. Number two will be your candidate said, I am going to be a stopgap to Igbo presidency. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's 75 years old. If he serves two term, he'll be well into his 80s. At the end of his first term, he's going to be 79, going to 80. Is he saying he's going to serve one term? What does he mean by that word that I'm going to be like a stopgap to Igbo presidency? Those two questions, please. Okay, I am going to, I'm going to take it head on first. You said supposed to be zoned to the south, unquote, Mr. Rufai Oseni. That is Jabawokri, I'm sorry. I will empirically let you know that it wasn't supposed to be shown to the South. I was at the meeting and they were, they did not, I was at the meeting where they were to hold out, when they had that meeting in Delta State, and I made a presentation to the governors on why it, will, it shouldn't be zoned to the South. And the reasons are clear. So when I keep hearing that same narrative, is a sophist whistle 
being blown by persons who don't mean well. Mr. Dr. Ruben Adele Yabati was the spokesperson of the president, of the last PDP president. And he knows that they spent five years and nine months in office. And, as, as, and prior to that, eight years of, 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 of uh, 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 Chief uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, almost aggregating 14 years. And we also know, we are here, that of all the last six elections in Nigeria, in, we have had six electoral circles, the PDP had given the Southern candidates four tickets and two to the North, Yaradua and Atiku in the first in, instance. So when you place six and divide it, if you place it six as a hundred percent, it means the South had had close to 70 percent of the total tickets of the PDP. The PDP had, on, had won elections four times. Four. And all the four elections that were won, were won eight years uh, Obasanjo, four years Good Luck Jonathan, and four years supposed by Yaradua, of which Yaradua spent two years and three months. So let's not keep saying, repeating this, this, this narrative. The arithmetics don't match the sophistry. That is the truth. The truth of the matter is the best option that was left for the PDP was to zone it, it was to throw the zone in open. I, Pedro, I did a documentary in 2010, in 2010, asking the president not to run in 2011. That is President Julio Jonathan. The title of that documentary was To Zone or Not To Zone. Based on his own reading of Article 7.3c of our constitution that talked about zoning. That was where zoning was jettisoned. Zoning wasn't jettisoned. In, 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 20, in, 20, in 2020, in 2022, 2023, the fact that even if, even if Zoni was to go to the south, the only place he could have the micro zone to was the southeast. The only two zones in Nigeria that have never produced the president of this country in 56 years is the minority northeast, of which Atiku, as a man from Jeddah in Adamawa State, is one, and then the southeast. Those are the two. In fact, the South East has actually tested presidential power last in the sense that Agui Umunako Agui Ironsi was the president of Nigeria or head of state and the supreme commander of the armed forces up to the, up to the wee hours of July 1966. These are facts. We cannot now just turn facts because we are playing on a hot air balloons. Now that is, on the, that is the truth. I just want that to be clear. However, who will be Peter Pan? <laughs> APC and MBD Peter Pan. I will be clear to you. And why I say it is not the same, it's not the same in volume, it's not the same in angst. What is Mr. Wike talking about? I don't want to come on air and say again and again that a, a, a governor is beginning to look like someone, someone suffocated by verbal diarrhea. We shouldn't say that now, but that is what it's playing out to be. And I know inside of me, inside of me, that behind the sanctuary of his locked door, he knows that this is a one rush fight by a man who knows, albeit by February, May, March to May 2023, he will just be another player and not the, I mean, power is the work is given by God. So when he, all the narratives, I saw it on air. Luckily, it was only I rise that didn't carry it live. The we, we, me, me thing was clear. He spoke all the way in the first person, in the first, in, in, in the first person. I, I, I. And I begin to wonder when the entire commonwealth of the reverse peoples have been swallowed and pocketed in the, in the, in the back hip of, 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 of Mr. Jason Wike. This election is not about Jason Wike. Jason Wike has played his part. And as an honorable man, like all the honorable men who took part in that primary, he should slap himself, wake up, guy, smell the coffee, join the party, let's cruise to victory. Because... If, because of a yes on weekend's continued brigadage, the collective will of the people of Nigeria is truncated, and we allow the perpetration of a near draconian 
almost Mephistophelian APC government that has taken us down. The, I was proud when Ruben in, 20, in, 20, in 2014 was reading out the press release that made Nigeria after they read the, a, 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 a re, um, whatever of our GDP as the largest economy in Africa. What are we today? A beggar nation, a palace nation on his knees. This should be about how to get them out of power and give power to someone who will give me succor, someone who promises me restructuring, someone I have his five point agenda I can hold him up to. I saw you in the last time speaking to one of our spokesmen, that is Rufai, and you were holding him up to the power sector where we want to generate 25,000 megawatts. It's doable and a 10,000 megawatts in the short term. And Nigeria, with our amount of brain power, with people like Ruben Abati, the first human being in the history of Nigeria to make a first class in the performing arts. Where are we today? We are here and letting the worst of us rule and, and dictate over the rest of us. This must change. And yes, on week, uh, should see that the train has long left the station. He shouldn't pull us back by coming up with all these uh, uh, cowboy. You know, go walk. As we are here, I know what is panning down in Kara Namuda. As we are here, I know what is panning down in Pangshin, in Shendan, in Lantang. I know what is going, because that is my duty, to monitor the electoral thinking and the voting patterns. I know what is happening in my state. And I know that Mr. Peter Obi has become something of a rerouting of the total election matrix. Great, but at the end of the day, the winnability quotient only rests on the doorstep of, of Atikwa Abubakar. That is the truth. Okay. With the 193,000 polling units in Nigeria, the structure of the party, the personality of the candidate, his cross-border and cross-geopolitical uh, 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 handshake is virtually the bridge across the Niger. Okay. He's as Yoruba with his wife from Oshu as he is Igbo. And, uh, so I don't have anything. I'm very comfortable that Mr. That, uh, 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 that Atiku Awubaka Waziri Adamawa is the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. QED. Okay, we have just a few minutes to go. One, the National Peace Committee has invited yes, presidential candidates today to come and sign the peace accord, the first accord. There will be a second one. Would your principal be there? Because we understand some people have been given excuses that they may not be available. Second, you talked about restructuring, which was uh, one of the uh, major themes in the third book that was launched yesterday. As briefly as possible, could you tell us how Atiku Abubakar wants to restructure Nigeria? And hopefully, this is not just a buzzword for him, because we've had that in the past and nothing happened with people who promised restructuring. Okay, so um, in the last, in the last uh, election round, okay, the peace accord, I think that will give the entire polity calm that there should be a peace accord so that our children will not be sacrificed for any inordinate political ambition of any one man. No man is worth the blood of any Nigerian. I'm just borrowing from uh, 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 His Excellency, good luck, Jonathan. So I believe, I have not spoken to the principal this morning, but I don't think it will be one to run away from a peace accord when by nature he is inherently a pacifier. He's inherently our, our unifier. So he's a peacemaker. And I think that is, that is key. We know those who, are, who, who, may, who may not be around. And, and Atiku Ahubaka is never part of those who will shy away from doing what is right. Now, on the theme of restructuring, in my personal interview with him, because I am an apostle of the restructuring of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm an, an apostle because I am from the most marginalized part of this country. And I was happy when he explained, because I want a, a weak federal uh, uh, center. And he explained his strong center and also the strong federating units. And that was clear. 
He's using the almost something close to the, Ameri to the American model. We are practicing an American federal, uh, an American uh, 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 presidential system without taking the American federal structure. So the center will be as strong as it should be, so as to be able to hold the country together. To use his buzzword, he said, unity in our diversity. And he said he grew up when Nigeria's anthem was, though our tribes and our tongues may differ in brotherhood, we stand. And he has said clearly that he will make sure all the federated units are able to take almost half the things on the uh, exclusive list. And once that is done, there is an almost automatic devolution of power to the next stratum of, 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 of governance. That is the state. And once that is done, there will be less uh, a, a cause for the dismembering of this country. That is the truth. So, and he has been singing it even prior to his running in 2019. Don't forget, in, two, in 2018, Atiku Obaka actually launched the Nigerian restructuring movement. So I don't think, as he grows older, the only legacy he can leave for Nigeria is a stable polity where do our tribes and tongues may differ. In Nigeria, in brotherhood, we will continue to stand. All right. Uh, so... I asked a question earlier, Ron. I'm going to ask it again. And I think I just got some confirmation from one of your campaign spokesperson, Mr. Daniel Buala, that Tikwa Baka will actually be at the signing of the peace accord. Uh, I asked a question earlier, Ron. I said Thank you. this thing he said, that he's a stopgap to Igbo presidency, I'd like to interrogate it further. He's 75 now. By the time he finishes his first time, he's going to be 79, yes. going to 80. If he does a second term on top of it, he's going to be the oldest president in the history of Nigeria, 83 years old. Is this saying he's going to do just one term and keep it moving? What is it all about? Uh, uh, Rufai, We never start this one. You they talk of the one when we never reach. The man will win this one first, stabilize Nigeria. And it is his mouth, he said, I'm a stopgap to Igbo presidency. And in all his three attempts at presidency, this is his third. I keep hearing some other funny, funny figures. No. His first one, he chose Ben Obi, an Igbo man, in spite of the fact that people did not want it that way. In the second time, he chose another Obi, Peter Obi, as his running mate. Now, this third time, he has chosen an other candidate of Igbo extraction, Ifai Okowa, as his running mate. So when he stands in the public and say, I am a stopgap to the Igbo presidency, can't you realize, like we do in contest question in literature, who said, when was it said, how was it said, that this man actually has shown an open propensity for the Igbo people? That is, that is, that is... As it is. Don Pedro, do you think yes. that INEC yes. is really yes. prepared or you think there are issues that INEC will still have to address further? In the light of recent protestations uh, by a chieftain of the coalition of United Political Parties, uh, CUPP. Yes, I, I, I believe that INEC appeared to be better positioned than they were in, 20, in 2019. However, it was worrisome when the, the, the INEC chairman actually told Nigerians months after the Oshu election that, uh, that there were hacks on the system. That was uh, 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 is unexpected. What I will tell INEC is, number one, all Nigerians, we have become the policemen of the system. Our eyes are on them, and we are going to deploy means to make sure that INEC meets the, the, the expectations of Nigerians. We are going to make sure that INEC does what is right by Nigerians. And more importantly, we would like to beg INEC to involve credible third parties who will ensure a fireproof process because the process is much more important than the outcome. Because a fouled up, skewed up process who cannot deliver a credible outcome. So the owners lie on INEC and the chairman to make sure that they are on the good side of Nigeria's history. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Don Pedro Obaseki. I uh, would like to thank you very much for joining us 
on The Money Show.